Are we uh, ready to go or do we uh, want to wait a little bit longer here, Mike? Uh, looks like we're good on our side. So should I uh, kick it off? Sounds good. Thank you, Mayor. I presume there's people watching us, right? Okay, good. Um, thanks everyone uh, for joining. Just a, a quick update on, before we dive into the webinar, on where we're at as a city as far as uh, COVID-19. Um, uh, today we have confirmed uh, over the past several months uh, a total of 2,146 uh, positive cases um, and we're at 83 New Haven residents that have passed away uh, due to COVID. Um, the, this, you know, there's been a lot of talk about um, uh, opening up and what it means in this date of May 20th. And this uh, webinar is designed to set the stage to um, underscore uh, not only what the state and the city are doing uh, to support restaurants, but um, uh, also the importance of the resources that are available to uh, so many of the business owners that are out there. Um, but I think it's also a venue for us to talk about uh, the, uh, there's been some uncertainty about opening up on May 20th and uh, what that means to our community and the state as a whole. And, uh, and I think it's important for us to have, a, have uh, to touch also on um, what the city's thinking about as far as what that May 20th date means. And I, and I can uh, share before I hand it over to other folks on the, on the webinar, what uh, my thoughts are about May 20th. First of all, in many ways we've been open for a while, right? Uh, essential businesses have been operating in, uh, in differing levels of um, capacity. Restaurants have been doing takeout and delivery. Obviously, the city's, uh, uh, city hall has been functioning. Uh, and some um, grocery and uh, corner stores have been operating as well. Uh, so I don't see May 20th as this, um, this single date for the next phase and reopening of retail, uh, outdoor dining, um, and uh, a, a number of other business barbers and hair, hair, uh, hair, hair salons. But it's, um, it's one small step, and this is a much longer conversation uh, about um, comfort and uh, health and safety. The city's obviously been very focused on health and I think that health is very closely tied to economic success. Um, if we do things too quickly, uh, we may end up having to tighten up again because of res resurgence of the virus. And that would mean uh, probably a significant impact on the economy in the longer term, maybe more so than um, uh, if we held off a little bit more. Uh, you know, the, the city is working towards uh, preparing and supporting our businesses for that May 20th date. Uh, the governor set that date and been clear about it. Um, and we are uh, doing a variety of things that we're gonna share on this call to help support uh, your feeling of comfort and safety. Uh, and that includes everything from working on uh, accessibility of PPE. Uh, the governor's office has created a task force to help uh, provide some PPE to small businesses. Uh, it includes vamping up testing, uh, ramping up testing, and you uh, you may have heard in the press that we are encouraging people that are uh, running businesses that uh, provide close contact with him with customers to have employees tested. And our site at uh, Chapel Street and Day Street is available to do that. Um, people should schedule beforehand. We're working on outreach as well. Uh, I'm really proud of the work that our team has done to prepare for uh, this presentation, but more importantly, to prepare for uh, overall uh, the work in supporting our uh, inching towards opening up. And uh, we're always available for questions and, um, and please share your concerns as well. So with that, I'll hand it over, I think, to Mike Piscatelli. I did actually just one final thing. I, I just want to say thank you to everyone. Um, obviously, this has been such a crazy time. And uh, there's been so many adjustments. Uh, people are really struggling and um, particularly business owners in New Haven and obviously around the nation have been really struggling to do the right thing. And I've been deeply impressed that uh, through such economic challenges, 
uh, small businesses in particular in New Haven is re have really stepped up and are doing what you can to uh, keep each other safe, to keep your employees safe, despite intense pressure, economic pressure. Uh, so I just want to say thank you for being flexible with all the social distancing and other orders. Thank you for doing your part. Um, we're, we hope that uh, you feel like we're doing our part to help support you as well. Go for it, Mike. Great. Well, um, Mayor, first of all, let me just say thank you to you and our team on the community services and health department side. You're going to hear from them first today. It's a very important moment for the city as we make this transition to a sort of a deeper reopen process, if you will. We're going to walk through that through a series of slides. And I'll be joined um, on the economic side by Ginny Kozlowski and Garrett Sheehan, our president of the Chamber of Commerce. And I'll put the screen up and I hope everyone can see it okay. So what we're gonna do today is go over an... Mike, for me, the screen looks a little bit unusual. Looks like a real zoom in on some part of your screen. That's okay. Let's see if we can do a little bit better. How about now? No, nope, now it's just our faces. Oh dear. Which are lovely, but not as informative. Normally it opens right up. If this is the worst of our problems, Mike. I know, right? Okay. Can you see it now? Nope. We can hear you now. Hmm. Can you share it with someone else? Maybe Gage and he can, he can put it up with that. Mike, I'm happy to do the deck for you. That would be great. Thanks so much. No problem. While Gage is putting it up, um, again, just wanted to talk a little bit about our Together New Haven effort in the overall, which relates to the direct response to the COVID-19 crisis here in the city. So you've seen us quite frequently out there on direct technical assistance as we've been helping our business community navigate the various federal programs. We've also stood up a couple of grant programs, not least is our artist recovery program to get sure that that's ready to go as well. We made the pivot this week in particular because of the reopen guidance that we got from the state and the specific sectors that are gonna reopen, uh, set to reopen next week. And as the mayor said, because we have so many sectors that are already up and running, not least the hospitals and manufacturing, the city is already very busy. So it's very important as these new sectors get into play that we do so in a very responsible fashion. And I think everyone on this call is now very familiar with the fact that hair salons and barbershops, commercial offices, retail, outdoor dining, and museum are the ones that are most uh, uh, points of focus, if you are, if you will. Mike, can you make me a host and then I can share my screen? I don't know how you became the host. I don't either. How about now? Can everybody see this? I can see it. Thank you. Thank okay. you, Gage. No problem. Okay. So I want it looks through. very far away. Is that the same for other folks? Other people, can you see it well? It's not it's filling like the PDF right now. Hold on. Who's running this city? Not me.
getting better. I'm sorry. Much better than I did, Gage. <laughs> Probably could just stick with that, Gage. You want to just do this? All right. Sorry about yep. that, folks. All right. So we're going to go in order for the presentation. And I'd like to start, as the mayor said, this is first and foremost related to public health and keeping everyone safe, starting with our business owner, their employees, and our customers. So let, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Dalal and Maritza Bond, our health director, to go through a public health update. Uh, thank you, Mike, and thank you, Mayor. I uh, really have uh, appreciated the hard work that has gone into this and, and uh, us being invited to, to um, give a public health uh, overview. Uh, Director Bond and I will uh, co-present this portion of the presentation. Uh, we'll try to be brief uh, so we can get to the meat of the, uh, the other parts of the presentation. Uh, but we did think it was important for us to share with you some of the data uh, so that you know what, what we're seeing uh, with respect to uh, the, the phase of the epidemic and what we're going to do about it. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> uh, I do have to put in a short disclaimer. I, we've learned very early on in this epidemic that uh, information recommendations uh, uh, and what we learn about the disease changes very rapidly. So I did want to say that this, is, this information is current of May, as of May 14th. Uh, some information may change uh, in, in the coming coming weeks, and in fact, I anticipate it will as we learn more about uh, the virus. Next slide, please. Uh, this slide uh, really uh, is a representation of um, uh, the number of cases over time. It starts way back in March when, when we started seeing our first case in New Haven. This is New Haven specific. Uh, you may have seen curves that are national or state level. Uh, but our health department does collect this uh, data as a New Haven specific um, uh, collection uh, um, uh, capture of data. Uh, and this is what the, the mayor and direct bond, director Bond used to report out every day. But what this slide shows is just a visual of how things have been going over time with respect to the number of cases. Uh, you talk, we, we hear a lot of talk about flattening the curve and, and, and uh, uh, getting to the portion where, where the number of cases that we pick up are, are, are get fewer and fewer. So the good news is it does seem to be headed in that direction, especially if you think of some of the top peaks we had in the middle of April, uh, you know, 60, in the mid 60s, a number of cases uh, uh, over uh, in, in the month of April. But in May, we're seeing this trend uh, with respect to, you know, the peak number of cases that we identify in a day being less uh, uh, over time. Uh, so we're hoping that trend does continue, but it's, it is important as businesses to be aware that we're not down to, uh, you know, a single digits uh, at, at this point. The last little bar that says three, I think is uh, just important to note that is that does not represent a complete week of data yet. We, we capture it by weeks and the three is the amount that we have uh, uh, for this specific uh, frame capture. So that's not uh, quite uh, the, going to be three, I don't think. I hope <laughs> maybe it will be, but uh, we anticipate that will be a higher number at the end of the week as well. Um, so again, uh, generally curving downwards, but certainly we're not out of the woods. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, uh, cases are sometimes hard to pick up because they depend on the availability of testing and how eager folks uh, are uh, for testing. So we look at other indicators as well to give us an idea of how uh, the epidemic is impacting our community. Uh, the top yellow line here is a curve of the number of hospitalizations uh, uh, that are um, uh, in, at the, in the, the local Yale New Haven hospital system. So that's the St. Rafe's uh, campus as well as the main campus uh, of the Yale New Haven hospital system. So this does extend beyond New Haven borders because obviously the hospitals see folks around the region. Uh, but again, it gives us a, a picture that we have been seeing a downward trend with respect to hospitalizations uh, over the past uh, uh, several weeks. Uh, and we are hoping that that is continuing, continu continuing. And this does mirror what we're seeing on a statewide level as well. Um, so with that, I'll turn it over to Director Bond to talk about some of the public health strategies that we are going to be implementing. Thank you, Dr. Dalau. And so uh, including uh, monitoring um, and doing surveillance of the daily cases, um, one of the efforts that we've been doing at the health department level is really trying to ensure access to testing um, and providing support and being conveners of those organizations that provide testing in the community. 
We also have focused our efforts around isolating and quarantining individuals so that we really can try to ensure that we are having measures and really having individuals self-isolate, those that are positive cases, and those that have to self-monitor that may be at risk to being positive because of exposure. And then, so we work really uh, diligently on these contact tracing efforts. The data that you uh, was just presented to you and some of the comments that made um, the mayor made is that we, there were seven criteria that the governor put in place. And so what we're presenting to you now is really this health risk scoring metric and some of the efforts that New Haven has been doing to ensure that we really are boxing in this pandemic so that we can all get back to working again. Next slide. So one of the things that we have done in the city of New Haven is really try to ensure that we, again, provided support to existing testing sites. So we had our first testing site, Yale New Haven Hospital, which was a mobile site on um, Sergeant Drive. We then had our, our rapid testing site within the CVS site, which we also provided support to ensure that we were bringing awareness to the community around those efforts. And we then served as conveners with both community health centers um, in our city, Fairhaven and Cornell, to really scale up testing in community areas where we know there were some hot spots. And we wanted to make sure that there was some walk up um, by appointment availability within um, those respective communities. We then also had a public and private partnership with Murphy Medical Associates, where we wanted to make sure that we offered the day in Chapel Street site, which is something the mayor just referenced in offering that to businesses, um, business owners to be able to um, you know, get tested and, um, by appointment. Um, and this is where you can find it. Um, so we created a page on our website, on our COVID-19 portal, where you can identify testing locations. And so we are gonna continue um, expanding these efforts and are working with the hospital and other local partners to ensure that we scale up testing so that we can then really box in this pandemic as I mentioned earlier. Next slide. So what you see in front of you, uh, this slide here is um, the cases per 100,000 um, residents. And so what we do know is that we were, um, in order for us to really get in, getting into a reduction of getting back to opening up our city, we needed to be at 152 tests per 100,000. And so as you see in front of you, in the most recent weeks, we have been meeting that goal. The week 20, again, back to uh, Dr. Dalal's point, we're still gathering that data and um, should see that number increase. And here, increase is actually good because it just goes to show the number of tests that were conducted um, that day per city, um, and within our city of New Haven. Next slide. Oh, one slide that's actually, uh, uh, missing that I wanted to show, um, show, I'm not sure where it is, but one of the things that we wanted to indicate that we also had some positive cases and we, we're starting to see a downward within our positive cases um, as indicated in a previous slide. And so what is gonna be our role as we uh, reopen the city? Um, our role within the health department is also to provide licensing and renewal process protocols. And we will offer some guidance tomorrow during the technical webinar during the 11 and 12 o'clock timeframe um, for barbershops, hair salons, and outdoor um, restaurants. We will talk about the inspection process and timeline as well as food trucks um, inspection protocols that we aim to uh, be um, scaling up um, throughout the next coming week. And that concludes my update. Well, I appreciate it, Director Bond, and thank you for the guidance on the public health side. It's been very important to the business community to have a sense for the landscape there. I mentioned at the beginning that Together New Haven is a wide ranging effort. We have a number of economic development partners and we're so appreciative of the different programs that we've been able to support the community with. And now we make this pivot because of the reopen guidance and the protocols and rules that we've received from the state and also to start setting ourselves up for the longer haul journey. And I'll give you some orientation slides to that effect and then turn it over to Garrett and Ginny for a detailed dive. Next slide. So this is what we talked about earlier. New Haven is by and large has a number of sectors already open. So that includes manufacturing and construction and essential retail. It's important and also helpful for the sectors that are set to open as early as May 20th 
that's an incredible amount of good guidance that's come out of the sectors open, particularly in takeout uh, restaurant spaces and in some of the essential retail that's open. And that's some of the guidance that um, Director Bond mentioned that we'll share tomorrow. And then again, May 20th, and then we're expecting future dates on reopen shortly. Next slide. We're gonna follow the cross-cutting sector-driven themes and rules for May 20th. First and foremost, safety first. So you'll see in the guidance and the rules, a lot of talk about the personal protective equipment, both for you and for customers. The science-driven approach, which is why the city is working so hard to ramp up testing and contact tracing such that we have a successful relaunch. Being prepared, you will see quite a bit of work on all of our parts and particularly on the part of business owners to put together preparation documents and having program administrators. Choice is very important that individual businesses have the choice of opening on May 20th, but one of the points we're making today is to make sure that we're ready such that we have a successful launch over time. And then I think as you've seen over the course of the week, those following since the rules were first announced on May 9th, that it's been a dynamic process. And DECD has been very receptive to comments and ideas to improve and support successful relaunch of businesses. Um, not least among those was the use of um, hair dryers and hair salons. Next slide. Locally, we've been doing a lot of work this week to make sure that we're in line with the state rules and also to support key sectors locally. So the health department is standing up its environmental health support line for those sectors that are licensed locally. You see the number on the screen. We have three focus group discussions, technical webinars coming up tomorrow. The first is for commercial office space at 10 o'clock. Then at 11 o'clock, we'll do hair salons and barber shops. And at 12 o'clock, we'll do restaurants and outdoor dining. We sent out the email with instructions to register yesterday. If you did not receive that, we will be sending it out again today and the information will be posted on our website. And then finally, very important, and you saw some of the media stories about this, we needed to develop new application packets to get ready for the changes in outdoor dining and in food trucks. And on the next slide, you'll see we have just posted the new application form for outdoor dining. And this is sort of a one-stop application, a clearinghouse type approach so that if you're a business or a restaurant that uses a sidewalk or is seeking to put a terrace in a parking space or even to use a park or a city owned public space, it's the same application form. The review and approvals will be slightly different, obviously, if it's a straightaway zoning approval. Let's say if you're a restaurant that has an existing parking lot and you just wanna go in the parking lot, that'll be different, obviously, than if you're proposing to do something in a city owned public space where it's a much more um, deliberative approval process and it'll take longer to get through. Um, but we're very pleased both with the executive order that came out and with our city staff, we're able to organize this in a way that provides a one stop for our customers. With that, I'd like to turn it over to our team members. So if Ginny Kozlowski and Garrett Sheehan can tee up the more specific rules here for statewide guidance, we'll go through those and then we'll close with Adrian Jefferson. Garrett's going to kick it off for us um, with the statewide reopen safeguard. Um, thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. And, uh, you know, I, I did have the opportunity to serve on the governor's uh, business Ad advisory committee. Um, I, I know, heard from lots of people. Some people think this is too fast. Some people think it's too slow. I, I just want to reiterate what the mayor said. You know, you are not forced to reopen on May 20th. And we do have a lot of businesses that have been open for a long time. Um, and we've learned a lot of things from how they've done their operations, whether it's walking into the grocery store or manufacturers, how they're checking their employees when they come in. And so we'll have to continue to lean on those lessons learned. Uh, this is not gonna be a completely smooth process. We wanna get things open, but we know there's going to be some hiccups. As, as Mike mentioned, uh, DCD has been extremely uh, helpful to work with and we're coming we're finding new issues every day and trying to as a team and all of us uh, address those but it, it's definitely not going to be perfect um, and, and also before I get started I'll just address to to the businesses that cannot open yet on May 20th we know that's extremely frustrating 
Um, your business may be your life. It's everything that you put into it. And so to be stuck in this position where you want to get going and, and you can't, um, we know how difficult that is. Uh, you know, I can tell you people on the committee have businesses that are, are struggling and we're definitely pushing forward to the governor the need uh, to allow some of these other businesses to open. Um, but there are still, you know, listening to the health experts and what makes the most sense. So I, I know that doesn't solve anyone's issue, but I just want to put that out there that uh, we do hear uh, from the businesses that cannot open um, and we are pushing those stories forward. Uh, just to talk about some of these safeguards briefly, I think you have to look at the, all these with common sense. You definitely want to follow the guidelines that are out there. They're very comprehensive, uh, but each situation is going to be unique. So when we talk about offices, we're, we're talking about limited capacity of 50%, lots of cleaning, disinfection. Um, if you can continue to work from home, uh, do so for sure. That applies to many offices. Um, in fact, I know myself, I'll, I'll be continuing to work from home because I've, uh, as you probably hear around me, kids uh, here that I'm, I'm watching. Um, high risk groups, this is always an issue. Uh, no one is saying that if you are 65 or older or you have a comorbidity that you must stay home, but it's strongly encouraged, strongly encouraged uh, based on what we've seen from the way that this virus um, has impacted. Now, how that conversation occurs in different businesses, I'll be the the first to admit that that's going to be um, a challenge. Some places where people uh, who are older who can work from home, um, that'll make a lot of sense, but I think there's going to be some challenges there. Uh, but we do have a strong unemployment system right now, but there's, there's still some more question marks around that. Uh, face masks, continue to wear face masks when in stores. And social gatherings, um, this is the five person limit. Um, that does apply to in the office um, also you know, even though restaurants can be open, um, they really do want to limit the groups of people uh, as a max of five people. And I, I should say, as I read these, I'm not a, uh, I don't work for the state and I'm not an expert on these official uh, guidelines here, but I, I have been um, seeing them a lot. We've been talking through with a lot of businesses about how uh, they would apply to their individual situations. Uh, next slide. Um, just going through some of these, you know, uh, let me hit a couple of the big ones. Uh, training, you know, no one was trained on COVID uh, and we're all still learning. So training is just going to be following common sense, common sense practices, uh, whether it's cleaning, uh, making sure people are continuing to wear masks, um, identifying those certain situations in your business operation where it becomes difficult. And then what are the types of things that you can do to make sure that you uh, take care of your employees and your customers. Um, the self-certification program, there has been a lot of concern about that. Uh, my understanding is it is up and running on the DCD website. It's a very simple process, essentially showing that you have gone through the rules, that you've read through what the guidelines are. The real purpose of this was to give more confidence to the consumer. I, one of the challenges we're gonna face is people may open their doors on May 20th. That doesn't necessarily mean that customers are gonna be running into your store. Uh, there's a lot of uncertainty among consumers as to whether they want to go out to a restaurant, other locations. Um, but we do think that if there's a certification process that you can put in your store window that shows that you have been paying attention, uh, that you're following the rules, that will start to develop the confidence in consumers um, to want to start to use your store again, use your facilities. And it's going to be a slow road of getting the health uh, up to where we want it, the health situation, but then also building that confidence within everyone else that they, it is safe for them uh, to go and start economic activity again. Uh, on this slide, I'll just one last comment here on the personal protective equipment. This has gone up and down in your ability to get it. I found in the last week or so, it has been much easier to obtain uh, face masks, gloves, other things on the Chamber website. We have a listing of uh, Chamber members who are offering these products. Um, I, I ordered some last week received it the next day. So it is definitely possible. There's going to be a much more surge of demand over the next few weeks. Um, but I do think that the supply is starting to catch up. It's still a kind of gray area to understand where to buy and we're hoping to get some more clarity. Uh, but there are more and more vendors that have hand sanitizer, um, these other products. Next slide. Um, again, a lot of these are just common sense things, continue to do social distancing in, in how you set up your business. 
have a cleaning plan, uh, have employees who know uh, when they have to clean, make sure you have a, a regular cleaning schedule, make sure that you're wearing uh, personal protective equipment when you're cleaning. That, that may be one of the uh, times when you're, you're most um, in close proximity uh, to potential virus. Next slide. Signage, this is a big one. Uh, there's uh, one thing that I, I said on this committee is, well, boy, we've got a lot of things to put on signs here. So, um, you know, we just want to make sure that signage is, is aware, that people know they need to wear face masks, that they continue to be reminded to do the things that um, are going to keep everyone safe. Uh, ventilate where you can. Think about the places where people touch, high touch areas. Those are the areas you want to clean the most. Next slide. And again, just some uh, for your daily operations, uh, logs, think through every process that you have. Think about where it makes sense to put hand sanitizer, how to make sure that those products are out for your employees. It, you know, it may take some walking through, um, just physical walking through of you yourself, walking through your business process to figure out some of the areas that could be danger points, some of the areas where you need to make some installations, whether that's plexiglass or something else. So again, I can't emphasize enough, you wanna follow the guidelines, but they are going to apply differently to your business just based off of the way your physical setup is, um, the type of work that you have. If you have a question, um, DCD is working on those individual situations, but also I know the city, uh, probably the economic development staff would be a good place to start if you think there's something that uh, does not work particularly for your business. Jenny? Thank you. Um, next slide, please. Um, as Garrett just reviewed the common overall guidelines that were issued by the state of Connecticut at the end of last week, um, they've also supported four of the sectors that are scheduled to open on the 20th. So kicking it off with restaurants and outdoor dining only. And as Mike um, indicated early, earlier that the rules are changing and guidelines are changing. So as Director Bond uh, stated, we will be including food trucks as well. Um, tomorrow, this group will be having their webinar at 11 o'clock and we'll be going into much greater detail around the guidelines for this specific sector, including that your bar areas need to be closed, your uh, spacing between tables, um, you have to use reusable mem uh, menus or chalkboards. Um, in each restaurant, it will be a little bit different because of the way that it does lay out. We're currently working with the city of New Haven to come out, come up with some more guidelines on opportunities for more outdoor dining locations. And that is a work in progress and we expect to have those out soon. Um, if you can um, go to the next slide, please. And as a point of reference, all of these guidelines are available at ct.gov in both English and Spanish. And um, they, they do change, so check frequent, frequently. Um, tomorrow at 10 o'clock, uh, we're going to have a session uh, led by City Plan to go through the office requirements. And as you can see in this layout, how it looks a little bit different than maybe it did when you left your offices back in March. And it is a work in progress. Um, there are obviously ways to accommodate different um, types of businesses, but our overall goal is to keep everyone as safe as possible. And if you can continue to work from home, we encourage you to do that. And I think the um, benefit of doing this in a group setting like this, we're all hearing it at the, at the same time. So if there are questions and when we're on the webinar, hopefully we can answer the majority of the questions for everyone. And if you need special um, assistance, we are there to help. Um, I want to give a shout out to the Department of Health. They have been working tirelessly to make sure we get this right. As the mayor uh, indicated, we do not want to take a step backwards and have to pull back we would like to keep the momentum growing and building right into the fall when we really do start to get much busier around the city. On the next section, which um, is hair salons and barbershops, which has generated a, a great deal of attention over the last week. Um, and many of us are not as familiar with the, the model here. So we have been learning a lot as we've gone through uh, the last seven days. So we will be doing that session tomorrow led by Kathy Graves at 11 o'clock. And as Mike indicated, you can find the, the call-in number on the city's website or the chambers. Um, I think one of the things we just want to make sure that people are aware 
that people can't wait inside the salon. You should have appointments and that um, your capacity in your building is really limited by the 50% the guideline that Garrett slated, cited earlier. And on the fourth uh, sector, which is retail, um, we are not going to have a extra webinar because many of our retail operators have been opened in the city. And if there is someone who needs more support or has other concerns, we are available to um, assist at any, any time. Um, we have joked, we've been getting calls at 11 o'clock at night, emails at all hours of the day with people asking questions. This is new to us. Sometimes we do know the answer. Sometimes we have to do a little research. So we thank you for your patience. Um, and if you have suggestions, that is another thing that we would welcome because we are learning. Uh, I'll turn this, um, my next slide, please. A couple of things that are not in the guideline, guidelines. Um, we wanna remind particularly restaurants, if you are uh, expanding to outdoor space, make sure that you update your insurance policies to include those areas. And if you are, um, you will see that in the, the health department's um, application that you may need to modify your liquor license as well. Um, and if you have a positive COVID case, employees shall empl inform their employers and follow the testing and contact tracing protocols. These are all, again, new for us. And if you are an employer and you have an employee that um, raises concerns about your practices, please do not take any retaliatory actions against that employee. They are looking out for your business and the health of your guests and your fellow um, employees. And there's federal guidelines about how employees should be treated um, during this period of uh, COVID crisis. So if you have questions on any of these areas, please contact us and we'll be happy to refer you to the appropriate people. Thank you. Ginny, I really appreciate the work that both you and Garrett did to both understand these documents, but also translate them in a way that works on an overview webinar, but also then the more technical dives tomorrow. And it's important to recognize we are doing the same thing many are. You read the documents and you may see things that are both rules and guidance. It's very important to know that these are rules and the self-certification process is very important to that effect. And we'll walk you through that in a little bit more detail tomorrow. Now I'd like to turn it over to Adrian Jefferson because as we've discussed, this is a journey far beyond just May 20th. And Adrian and her team have done quite a bit of work to help us along on that journey. Thank you, Mike. Um, thank you, Mayor, for having me today. Um, what I would like to do is walk you through our very specific Together New Haven initiatives that have come out of the economic resiliency effort and is now leading us into this recovery effort as a community. Um, so Together New Haven, there's actually a website for it, togethernewhaven.com. This is a central hub for providing resources and guidance and really igniting just continual conversation that will help to bridge the gap and help to pr promote togetherness during this time. We, we don't wanna see anyone left behind as it comes to collecting and receiving information. So we're paying particular attention to the dissemination of information and how and who we get that information to within a very timely manner. Um, so again, the website is togethernewhaven.com. You can go to this website and re receive resources on the economic side, on the arts and culture side, and we have be been repopulating information from the health department as well, and we will continue to update that website. In addition to um, the Together New Haven website, we have many initiatives that fall under Together New Haven as an umbrella. The Civic Space is a new space that's an online gathering for civic engagement during, during this recovery and helping us to maintain resiliency. Um, we are gonna be looking at forums and panels and workshops and just really having continual dialogue with the community to check in to see how the community is feeling during this time. Again, just also sharing the resources. So it's really essentially a shared space. Our first uh, civic space collab collaborative effort is actually happening on May 18th, which is on Monday. This is gonna be a conference, a virtual conference that you can actually go to togethernewhaven.com and register right from the website to 
be in panels that are going to discuss economic rebound, arts and culture, community well-being, workspace, climate, and health. And um, this is all focused on COVID-19 and reshaping our communities, reshaping our culture and our new normal and what that looks like. And again, we're going we're gonna to do this together. So May 18th, you can register at togethernewhaven.com and it will direct you to a link. In addition to our efforts, you know, like I kind of said a little bit earlier, just the dissemination of information, especially as it pertains to public health information. So we've partnered with the health department, the mayor's office, economic development, and arts and culture to design a mask up campaign. And this campaign is, is, is partnered with community influencers to help promote mask wearing as a way to be self um, safe, healthy and responsible and to really protect yourself and not just yourself but also do your part in protecting your community members by wearing the mask by following the protocol and the guidelines so we have partnered again with so many influencers this this will be displayed on billboards throughout the city and also we've already started to roll them out on social media so please be share this information if you have questions there's the health department's number right on the flyers, so you can contact the health department directly. And if you wanna be involved, you can get in contact with myself. Um, and another initiative that we have with Town Green is the Together New Haven Marketplace, which is a platform that's really consumer-based in, in order to work with our local businesses to really help mitigate the damage of what's been done um, during this time and to drive business back into these local businesses. Uh, I think that the partnerships that we have we have done throughout this time has been instrumental in moving this forward and getting the information out. And we wanna continue to work with the community to make sure that everyone's receiving the information. Um, and just in closing, ultimately we are in this together and we will get through this together. You know, this is this is a journey. We will be in this for some time, but but no one's by themselves and we are thinking about you and your well being. Thank you, oh Mike. Adrian, uh, thank you very much and all our panelists and, um, and Mayor, thank you for the opportunity to present. Um, much like not being able to share my screen, I can't see the questions and maybe someone else can see those if there are questions for any of uh, the people who presented today and generally on reopen. Gage, any wisdom here on the questions? Uh, I'm looking through, uh, I don't see any questions. Um, I do see Michael Bingham has his hand up, so I'm gonna allow him to talk and he can ask a question. Michael? Can you, can you unmute yourself? Can you hear me now? Yep. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Uh, this is for Michael. How do restaurants get a copy of the application for um, for outdoor seating? And can they expect to, um, what do they do with it? And can they expect to get it turned around um, by next Wednesday? So the application process, if it's not online yet, it will be online by the end of the day today. And the process includes the number of pathways, right? So a sidewalk permit is a lot different than say a terrace or you know, let's say you're proposing to, to use a city street, that's a long process. It would go through the Board of Alders, a very long um, community engaged process. But for the ones that are a little bit more straightforward, like going into your parking lot or sidewalk or a terrace, we intend to turn those around very quickly. The process includes a stringent review by the health department, as well as DPW, zoning and traffic and parking. And those groups have been working together all week to make sure that the process is tight and can be efficient. Thanks. I've got some more questions in the chat here. Uh, Johanna Hamilton, um, she asked, are there separate instructions for landlords versus business owners? I don't know if I have an exact answer to that question, um, but let us, if you could give us your email address, let me follow up and we'll see what the state has to say about landlords in specific. I've got another one from Jose de Jesus. We have a cafe with liquor and food. We do not have outdoor eating area. Can we plan to open? 
Hard, hard to say, this is similar to some of the requests we've gotten so far. So one of the items in the application process is to put together a site plan so that we can make, measure the distances because physical distancing is so important with any of these particular establishments. We are going to help you with that process. It's very important to know that not everyone can just draw a site plan in five days or whatever it might take. So tomorrow's webinar, we'll have the resources and technical support. Bring your address and every information piece that you have so we can help you. Uh, I've got one from Vito Bonanno. Where exactly online will the application be posted for outdoor use? It'll be both in our permit center and in the Together New Haven section of the website. Nice to see you, Mr. Bonanno. Christine Ingram, how will outdoor dining take place in places that don't normally have an outdoor space? So it depends on where it is. If it's a terrace in a city street, we have a process that goes through our DPW. If it's to use, let's say Pitkin Plaza is a good example. Pitkin Plaza is actually a, a you know, part of the sort of, sort of off-site city uh, property system. So we do a license agreement. And that process takes a little bit longer because there are a number of different approvals associated with it, but you'll use the same application form. Uh, Sharon, will there be six feet distance on sidewalks <clears throat> for pedestrians walking by outdoor dining? Unless Director Bond, you've seen the exact mapping of it. I have not yet, but we'll have it in time for tomorrow's webinar. Correct. Um, we will go in, we'll delve into that process tomorrow, but we wanted to make sure that the consumers and cust uh, the restaurant uh, patrons um, have all safe measures in place. Uh, Mark's got a question in regards to restaurants. The new rules say that silverware must be plastic or rolled silverware. Can we use our regular plateware and glassware or must we use plastic? It's an actually a really good question. And it's one of the ones that the city will not answer alone because these are rules that are put forth by DECD and the state of Connecticut. So a, rule, a question like that is a good one for us to roll up and get to the right people to answer so that we have consistent practice around the state. John, uh, thank you everyone. We all appreciate the help and community. Looking for a website for DECD certification. Can you provide? I think we might be able to put the link in the chat box. Um, they did launch the self-certification process today. It's, a, it's about a two page, you know, it's a quick hit type of online piece that you fill out and then you self-certify. I just tried to Google it and had trouble finding it. So we should try to put it out through our channels. Um, I see a couple of questions on it. If this webinar will be available online later. Yes, it will. We plan to upload it to the mayor's YouTube channel and I will type that in the chat. Um, we also have the live stream linked on our Facebook page if you want to go find that. Uh, Tom Breen has a question. Thank you for the presentation. Is the city considering closing down any streets to create more space for outdoor dining? It's a longer conversation. We were able to at least dimension what that would look like by getting the application process together. Um, but it's a longer conversation, both with our downtown merchants, where it's most likely, and our alders before we can say definitively. We've had some really good ideas, though, really constructive, thoughtful ideas of what we may be able to do. Yeah, I just add to that that we're excited to do what we can to make sure that we're providing resources for our businesses and customers to uh, operate safely. And we've had a lot of conversations about that potential. Obviously, there's some complications um, with logistics. And also, uh, we, we want to do this in partnership with the Board of Alders. Alan's got a question. Who can I contact with specific questions regarding PPE for staff? On tomorrow's call, we're going to have introduce Kathy Graves. Uh, many of you know Kathy from our Small Business Resource Center. She's gonna head up together with our Emergency Operations Center, our efforts to support, support small businesses with PPE. And as the mayor said, this will be a statewide initiative to support our small business. And she's working closely with state officials on that. Uh, another question here, do we need social distancing signs on the patio floor? The 
needs to be clear markers for sure. Um, there needs to be clear markers um, for sure, and we'll talk about that tomorrow um, when we have the different permitting departments um, on the call as well. Well, uh, Kyle Jones has a question. Um, will the fees associated with outdoor applications and the terraces be modified or waived? So not out the gate, the, the, you'll see the fee schedule in the application process. And then some of those fees were brought to the Board of Alders, Alders as part of the FY21 budget process. The one thing we will also do is stand up some additional support for restaurants that are uh, need of space for takeout. And that is something that the city is gonna be flexible on in order to have some room at the curbside for takeout. Jose De Jesus has a follow-up question. Can we set up tables in a grassy area in between sidewalk and building? So with the new zoning rules and the executive order, it gives us some flexibility. It's hard to say without looking at the plan and seeing the site exactly what might work. Those are areas where the health department's um, insights are gonna be really, really important. So not everything is gonna be typically a parking lot. Um, in New Haven, many uh, small businesses and restaurants don't have that sort of space. So we're going to try to be accommodating, but it has to be done safely. And you, but you need the city's approval to do that. Correct. So you got to check with the city. You got to check with the city before um, just doing it. Uh, Rob's got a question. Uh, you own a business, follow all the health procedures with your employees and your guests, and then one of them tests positive. What will be the procedure? Will the business need to shut down for a quarantine period? Um, that's when the health department will get involved and conduct a contact tracing effort with the restaurant. So we will be working with the restaurant on that uh, if that were to occur. Thank you, Director Bonvito has got another question. Will there be a different application for street space for curbside pickup and takeout? All one application. I don't see any more questions. Um, we do have a few minutes here, though. And I think if people didn't see it, um, thank you, Steve Fontana and others who were able to post the, um, the link to the self-certification. It's in the box and we'll have it again tomorrow. Uh, one more one more question here from Tom Breen. Um, what happens if new cases and hospitalizations spike after May 20th? Well, we will be, we'll be doing continuous monitoring and surveillance of the pandemic, so that's not going to stop. And so should there be a spike, we would have to obviously revisit and work with our the mayor, city officials, as well as the governor to determine what next steps will be. Yeah, I think I think in in general the the approach is, I think Dr. Dalal described it pretty well on a previous press conference about um, the faucet and opening the faucet a little bit, seeing how it goes, and if necessary, closing the faucet a little bit again. Um, so, in thinking about what it looks like to open up, that will be our general approach as a city, and we expect the state will do the same. Um, the one trick is that. You don't know about um, there being a problem until a couple weeks afterwards, right? So, because there is a lag time often, oftentimes between um, the spread of the virus and when we have the health indic indicators to show us that there's a uh, spread. Um, but, like Director Bond said, we'll be monitoring this very, very closely. And I think it's important for uh, all businesses to be flexible down the road if there is another spike to unfortunately potentially have to uh, tighten up again. Um, I think I got one more question here uh, from Brian. When will street parking enforcement resume? Mike, I don't know if you have any, do you have any more updated information than I do? No, working on it now, hopefully get everyone back out on the street in the very near future. It's important as we start the reopen process. Um, Want to make sure we do it safely because that's a high touch environment with the meters themselves.
Should we close it out? Do you want to close it out, Mike? Just want to say thank you to everyone. The, the questions were actually really informative and will help us uh, craft the messaging again tomorrow so that we're good with all of our key businesses. And thank you to everyone working on the Together New Haven effort. And thank you, Mayor, for leading us through it. Um, thank you to the team for um, all your work preparing uh, for this uh, incremental opening up. I did see a comment how best to contact the mayor during this period. Uh, my cell phone's 203-500-2969. Uh, feel free to shoot me a text or call me if, uh, if there's anything you need. And um, if you can't get in touch with members of our team, you should let me know as well. Um, but everyone in the team is pretty darn good at getting back to folks. Um, thank you everyone again for all your work during this uh, crazy, crazy time. And uh, let's keep plugging away. Uh, we'll get beyond this eventually, but as a, uh, as a community working together, we're gonna be much more successful at uh, overcoming this thing. So thank you. Great, thank you all.